hello, nice to have you back with us. Uh, according to Andrew Kinsey, who's the head of risk at GT247, um, changes in the regulatory climate and also the rise of new technologies have made it a lot easier for people to trade offshore and opened up new offshore trading opportunities. Uh, that's the reason why we invited him into the studio to come and chat with us about that. Nice to see you again, Andrew. Thank you. Um, let's, let's look at the, the technologies first mm. off. Uh, wh what are you talking about there? Well, certainly the rise of the internet has enabled retail investors, the man in the street, to be able to basically trade or invest in any type of asset class you like. So whether it's currencies or commodities or bonds or, or equities, whether it's here in South Africa or, or internationally. So it's the rise of the internet. And I remember going back 20 years mm -hmm. when I first started trading, we, we were at the banks and we had all the access to these markets and the man in the street had nothing. Now they have access to the same markets, the same prices as the interbank traders. So the market has, or the world itself, has become much more uh, efficient uh, and it's driving down the costs of the intermediaries like ourselves. So the man in the street now has huge opportunities, not only to make money, but to really get himself into trouble. I'm glad you came to that because <laughs> I was just thinking to myself, as you were talking, we've got to raise the sort yeah. of other mm. aspect of it here. Um, we'll get to that in a moment. Sure. The, the, the regulatory uh, changes that have taken well, place? Well, certainly here, if we talk about a South African-centric um, uh, issue, yeah. for, for decades we had exchange control, uh, which basically limited the, uh, in the universe of investable assets for South Africans to South African uh, bonds, South African equities, by and large, yeah. and money market deposits. Now with the relaxation of exchange control, uh, the ceilings are so high that the access is, is basically open. If you want to take money offshore, be our guest, essentially, is what the, what the Reserve Bank is saying. And that's really... As long as you've paid your taxes. Yeah, and, and you, you've made sure that you, you're right with SARS. Yeah. Um, so there, there, there are essentially two hurdles. Make yourself right with SARS, SARS and make the application to the Reserve Bank and then, as they say in the classics, the world is your oyster. The, okay, when it comes to, to the, the trading part of it mm. though, let's just get the, 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 the base correct here. Yeah. Do you have to show to the Reserve Bank that you have a substantial amount of money sitting in cash which you are going to utilise? because I'm not sure that the Reserve Bank would like you taking, starting to trade if, if you... On borrowed money? Yeah. yeah. If, well, look, I, I think that is, as long as you're right with the tax man and a bank is prepared to lend you money for you to trade, I don't think that the Reserve Bank themselves would ra necessarily raise an issue. Let, let's say that you've paid off your house, right? And you then raise a mortgage against that house and use that to trade, to e export the, the capital. I don't think that they can raise uh, in, any sort of objection. Because I know if you're wanting to take money offshore, yep. um, as in physically take it offshore, yep. you have got to have that money sure. in, in a, a bank yes. account and be able to have, show proof of that. Before. Yeah. Our platform allows you to trade in rands. So we will offer you access to international commodities, international equities, international indices, international fixed income instruments denominated in rand. So you don't necessarily have That's to take the money offshore. Okay. Now, let's, let's, let's look at your model because mm. you, you know what your, yep. you yep. know best what your model is about. Yes. How, do, how do I then start working through you? I've, I've never traded yep. offshore and I'd like to try it. Right. Essentially what we do is we provide you with an internet platform and it comes with training, uh, and client contact. And we found that uh, getting to know the customer, I, I know this sounds a little cliched, but often the, the biggest impediment to getting people to trade is that fear, that first step mm. of actually committing capital. So we have a large number of salespeople sort of dotted all around the countryside who will come to you if you ex express an interest, our, our, our site is there, if you express an interest and you say, I'd like to trade I in offshore assets, how do I go about it? Somebody will come to you and say, these are the products that 
we have. This is how the online platform works. So we uh, aggressively go towards customers with a two-pronged attack. One is to provide an online trading system, the efficiency and, and the effectiveness of trading international assets. Hand in hand with somebody actually coming to you and saying, this is how it's done. Don't be scared. Don't commit all of your capital to a, a single trade. And let's see how it goes. And one of the ways that we get people across that hurdle is to provide them with a simulated trading platform. So we credit that account with a simulated 100,000 Rand, and you see how it goes. And the remarkable thing is that a lot of people turn around and say, I didn't realize I could lose that money so quickly, because they all sort of bet black or red, and they end up losing the money. Because the markets, when we're talking about uh, financial markets, they're different from when you go shopping or when you buy a house. We refer to them as high frequency. So the prices change rapidly. Yeah. So you can lose cash very, very quickly. Whereas the house, you know, it, 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 it appreciates in capital over a period of years. Or prices changes, change in the shop, you know, once every couple of months. You see, you see, you see it on, on uh, a show like our reality show here at CNBC, yeah. Top, Top Trader, yeah. where you've got novices who, who, who are entering into the space yes. now. Yeah. Um, and the, it is... There, there are always those fluctuations that are coming in, and I think that's where people start getting nervous yes. because, mm. and maybe I'm throwing in something mm. here. And if, mm. if if you are if you do watch Top Trader, Trader, maybe you should just see if there is a trend there. Mm. Maybe those people revisit their stocks too often. Yeah, I, th I think there would be. I know I, there'd be nothing worse for me to go and look at my online trading accounts every single day and go. Oh, Jeez, it's two percent down. What am I going to do? What are, because people start getting frantic. Yeah, yeah. Well, th this is the key. When when I went on an uh, on a trading course fifteen years ago, and I went to these guys in in Chicago, and it was an options course, but the the lessons apply to sort of uh, equities or, or or linear type instruments as well. They said to us, "What is a linear type instrument?" If you buy, let's say you buy hundred Anglo shares. Yeah. Right. And the price goes from 240 to 245. The profit is the linear distance between where you bought and where you sold, times the number of shares that you've bought. Whereas if you're talking about a non-linear instrument like an option, it has a curved linear payoff profile. So you can have profits from unex unexpected dif distances or differences. But the point that they made was that if you've put this trade on for a particular reason, Leave it until that rationale disappears. Don't fiddle with it. Don't add to it. Don't reduce it. If the reason that you've put the trade on has changed, then cut the trade. Otherwise, leave it alone. And one of the real sins that we see um, with people who access our online platform is their temptation to fiddle and to overtrade. That's one of the real a sins that you can commit as a trader or a, a, as an investor is that you put on a trade, you get frightened, as you say, by that 2% move down. You think to yourself, what am I going to do? Sell, and then the market goes straight back to where you are. Nothing's, nothing's effectively changed in the market. You're down mm -hmm. 10,000 Rand. Yeah. Is there any truth in the adage, we seem to be moving off the subject, yes. but we will get back onto mm -hmm. it, I promise you. <laughs> Is there any truth in the adage, and I, I don't know where I heard it, but if when you buy an equity, for example, yes. you should be, in buying it, be pre have a number in your head where you would allow it to drop to. So yep. not just know where you want to take profit. Take profit. So yep. what's, what's it called? Stop, stop loss. Stop loss, yeah. Stop loss. The, the key to it, and, and, and what, what you're touching on here is, is plan the trade, trade the plan. So if you've got into this equity or whatever asset it is and you've bought it at 100, you, you must envisage two outcomes. It gets to your take profit level where you sell the stock out or your stop loss level where you realize that you are wrong. Okay. And the reason why people lose money is they don't execute that stop loss because they realize they're wrong it's because they've, lo they've lost too much money. So they may still be right, 
but they've committed too much capital to this individual trade. So we often see people wanting to hit the home run with every single trade. Trading is like every other profession. It's made up of hundreds of days of just making the lunch money, and then once every 50 or 60 days, that's when you have the big trade. But people want to trade as if they're gonna make the million in the first trade. They want to put the feet up on the table, watch the money roll in, and, it, and it, it, it's often an, a, a very appealing way of trying to make money. You don't have to work too hard, do you? Unless you're sweating there at 10 o'clock at night because the market's moving against you. But the key is to right-size your trade. Don't commit all of your capital to a single trade. Make sure that if you are entering into trade, nothing more than 7 to 12% of your total capital should be committed to a single trade. And, and in that way, you avoid the risk of getting down to a level where you feel you've lost too much money, but in fact the trade has moved slightly against you, but in time will move for you. Okay. Uh, you, now, I'm, I'm thinking my way through this one, mm. and I'm only thinking uh, top top trader here yeah and and i'm only thinking in a sort of south african context yep. now you're coming to me and saying hey hello my bud let's take some of your money and let's do this overseas mm. in markets i don't know I, I haven't got the vaguest idea about them and also i'm open to currency fluctuations yeah yeah and that depends on one politician saying the wrong thing at the wrong yeah. time yeah yeah well the, the, there's certainly a couple of way, a couple of ways to look at it certainly the rand itself is very volatile so even if you make a huge amount of money offshore let, let's say you made a hundred thousand dollars on trading rand strengthens by 15 percent net net in rand terms you're in the same place so the, the key is really to take if you're taking the money offshore to say that money is now gone Right? Whatever it turns out to be in, in RAND terms, I'm now trading international assets. There's no point taking the money offshore and looking for investment opportunities that will make up the RAND loss. You may as well have just kept your money here in South Africa. By the, sa by the same token, you could take your money offshore, put it in, in, in the UK or, or in Switzerland or what have you, and just wait for the RAND to depreciate. Okay, wait, Andrew, I'm, I'm going to have to stop you mm. there, okay? It's not that I'm not really understanding this. Yeah. It's just that I'm getting petrified. Yeah. Okay. Look, I'm even shaking. Can we take a break? Sure. And come back. I'll just, yeah. I'll just need a few moments to get over this. This is getting quite hectic. We'll see you in a moment. <laughs>